what's up? Welcome back to the University of Georgia Sailing Channel. My name is Allison and today we are talking about how a sailboat race works. Let's get going. Just like race cars need tracks, cross country runners need paths, swimmers need lanes, sailboats need race courses. We set the guidelines to our race course with buoys that are anchored to the ground. This is going to be an aerial shot of our race course. Here's our wind coming down from the top and all of the buoys that make up the race course will be adjusted according to where the wind is coming from. Okay, let's draw some buoys. The better term for these are marks, but they all serve a different purpose on the race course. Starting with our top and bottom marks, this is going to be your windward mark up here and your leeward mark down there. The terms windward and leeward are applied to many things in sailing, including these two marks here. Think of windward as closest to the wind and leeward as farthest from the wind. So of these two marks and the way the wind is coming from, this mark is closer to the wind, so we're going to call it the windward mark, and this mark is farther from the wind, so it's called the leeward mark. Your side and side buoys right here are a little different. This one is going to be called a pin, and this one is actually a boat, usually a motorboat. Um, the size of the motorboat depends on the size of the sailboats competing. So this boat right here is called the race committee boat or the RC boat. On it sits a small group of people responsible for administering the races. They're the ones who call the starting sequence, who watch the starting line to make sure everyone is starting fairly, and who record finishes. Next, let's talk about that starting line. It is an imaginary line drawn between the pin and the race committee boat. You won't see someone spray paint this in the water anywhere. You just have to imagine it. And the race committee will do their best to set this perpendicular to the wind. Okay, so let's talk about how to get around this. <laughs> how to start and how to finish. I'm going to put a picture up in the corner here of our points of sail diagram from the last video to reference if you need it. So before the start, all of the boats will line up along the starting line, but they'll stay to leeward of the starting line. So you'll see a bunch of boats doing this. They are not allowed to cross the starting line, so they are constantly checking to make sure that they are not breaking any rules. And the race committee over here has someone watching down the line to make sure that no one has crossed over illegally before they're allowed to. Almost always the boats will be lining up in this fashion with their starboard side closest to the wind. And in another video, we will get into why this is the most preferred starting position. Let's focus on one boat right now. And this boat has their sail luffing because they don't need to go anywhere right now. But as they near go, they're going to pull in their sail to a close haul position on starboard tack here. That will give them the power that they need to start moving across the line to the windward side of the course. So they will head off in this direction and they have officially started the race. You must start between the pin and the race committee boat. In the last video, I briefly mentioned how the two close haul positions are what are needed to advance up into the direction that the wind is coming from. Right now we're on a starboard close hauled tack, but as you can see, if we keep going in this direction, we will never get here. So what this boat will need to do is tack back and forth to reach their destination, alternating between a starboard tack close hauled and a port tack close hauled, but it's going to look like a zigzag. So this is the zigzag pattern that will take place on your way to your windward mark. And then as you're approaching the windward mark, you need to keep in mind that the boat needs to round from the right to the left. So you're going to leave the mark to port. After rounding your windward mark, we are going to transition to the downwind leg of the race course. And to transition your boat to this position, you need only to let your sail out to be perpendicular to the wind that's coming from behind you. And at this point, you are going to make a run for the leeward mark. So let's bring our boat down here. After sailing your downwind leg, the competitors will transition back to another upwind leg. In the process, they will leave the leeward mark to the port side of the boat, just like the windward mark when they transition to their downwind leg. That's an ugly boat. Look at that poor thing. I'm sorry. There we go. After rounding the leeward mark, the boats are aiming for the old starting line, which is now the new finish line. So to get up to our finish line, we will have to tack back and forth between starboard tack close hauled and port tack close hauled in our zigzag pattern, just like our first windward leg. And in order for your finish to be legal, you must sail in between the pin and the race committee boat. On the race committee boat, there will be someone who is watching the line, just like at the start, to take down boat numbers and record finishes. If your race is only one lap, this is a successful completion of a race. What we just completed here is called a modified windward leeward course, or abbreviated as MWL. It is the most common race course that you'll see in high school and college sailing. And the way I like to remember this is after starting, you have a windward leg, 
and you have a leeward leg. And if it were just a windward leeward race, you would finish on this downwind leg right here, crossing through the pin and the race committee boat. But since it's a modified windward leeward, you add on a little extra and you complete a full lap. Thank you so much for watching How a Race Works. Please let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions I can answer for you, and I will see you next time. Bye!